Hi everyone, I've got a HP 6643A power supply and I've had this for a while. Um, I picked it up at the uh, Tektronics garage sale. Uh, probably a lot of you don't realize that I live just down the street from the Tektronics World Headquarters and before the pandemic they used to have a, uh, every month they'd have a uh, sale where they'd sell off old equipment. And it's a pretty good place to get um, late 90s, early 2000s uh, test equipment. You know, I pulled the cover off of it. Um, the power supply itself actually works just fine, but I want to modify it so it has uh, binding posts on the front, specifically right here. And I've made a 3D printed part for it uh, that will go in the back, specifically um, right here. Lines up the bulldogs there and so it has some binding posts that go through here. I think uh, positive negative uh, ground um, And then it'll be a bit nicer bench power supply um, What these are for actually I believe are just automated testing uh, the device itself has a uh, Should I call it, what was it HPIO uh, basically IEEE 488 port um, if you're a Commodore PET aficionado, you recognize this port. It's actually the exact same connector. My theory as to why the Commodore PET used to use these is uh, these interfaces are actually really common um, in electronic manufacturing test equipment. I have an oscilloscope that's made by Tektronix that actually has this interface. The interface itself is actually designed by HP, uh, but I noticed actually all the chips that support um, HPIO are all made by Intel. Uh, except for that guy there. So anyhow, what I need to do is pull the uh, system board out um, and solder some spades onto it and make up some crimped wires and I believe solder some jumpers into place and oh, some, some suppression capacitors as well for safety reasons. I added some leaded solder to this to help it flow a bit better. And I'm gonna use try to use the wick to soak up the hole. Almost got it. Board is a bit unwieldy. My little workbench. So that's the side I actually tacked on, so let's do this one first. So there's the finished product. So we've got a uh, positive negative 
spade, ground spade, um, 47, 0.47 microfarad, 0 0.10 microfarad, 0 0.10 microfarad. Um, all I have to do now is put some wires into the part up here. Um, where'd it go? Yeah, right here. It's just behind this capacitor. Spin this around slightly. Yeah, put some wires in there, which uh, will bridge this part to this part. And we'll... Oh, and I have to make some wires for the spades on the front here. And then we're pretty much done. Just soldering in jumpers. Interestingly enough, by the way, there's a warning on the back of the case, which I'll try to take a photo of, that says, Warning! Metric and imperial measurements inside. Um, the distance from here to here is exactly 0 0.6 of an inch. It's kind of weird. Um, I don't really think outside of woodworking and uh, highways that um, imperial units are used for anything in the U.S. anymore. But in the late 90s, early 2000s they were. Here's that warning on the uh, metric and English hardware. Consult service manual, metric and English hardware used. I thought that was kind of amusing. This next part I think is probably the most interesting part of the mod and that's how you mount the um, terminals to the front. So what I've got is a 3D uh, printed part. Actually, this is the one with the hole in it. Let's put this guy here. 3D printed part. And I've got a link to the description, in the description rather, to this. Um, this one's slightly modified from the guy who made it. Um, it's got a notch right here and a little part down here to fit into this uh, guy down here. And I removed the, uh, some of these mods actually, they want you to put a local remote sensing switch in the front, which I don't really care about all that much. <coughs> That's how it goes in. And I think what I'll do is find my black pen wherever that went. Here it is on the floor. And I'm going to mark the center where to punch the holes out. And then we'll do that. And then I'll slide the uh, these guys back in through. Um, and then, <clears throat> and then solder the wires to this back to the power supply motherboard. And what I did is I actually pushed out this way because I kind of want to push back through this way so that it it flanges the plastic out this way. Um, I'm just going to use a screwdriver, I think, like that. Just punch five holes into it. So what I've done is I've basically soldered um, three wires uh, to the binding posts and then two wires between them so that all the wires are connected. Then on the end, um, the spades are connected. Uh, I also shortened down the um, 3D printed part so that it would actually fit inside the sheet metal part. So unfortunately, I kind of screwed up the footage for the actual soldering part because my hand obscured it. I need to work on camera angles. It's kind of hard to get the whole thing in shot, but um, before I put it all back together, I thought actually I probably should test it. <laughs> Make sure it still works. And it seems to. I just find my voltmeter. There's a warning, by the way, on the heatsink that says don't touch this. It may be live, um, so I'm not going to touch it. So, I'm going to stick the 
probes in the end here. Just send DC volts and then change the output on off. Yeah, it seems to be working. Oh, this is very fine. <laughs> Let's go up. There we go. Let's go all the way up to 30 volts. 35 volts. Oh, 35 volts is the max, yeah. So it's working. So all I need to do now is attach these sense wires um, and then finish putting the chassis back on. Uh, the output instead. Okay. Yep, so I'm just going to finish putting this together and then I'm going to put it back onto my little bread rack underneath the oscilloscope. And we're done with the project. So there it is in my uh, little bread rack underneath my Tech 2430A. Um, and honestly, if you weren't told it was modified, I don't think you could tell really. I mean, it looks really clean. I really like the way that looks. Um, anyhow, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, feel free to leave a comment or ask questions if you want. I'll try to answer them if I can. I think uh, if I ever opened it again, I think the next mod I want to do is to make it a bit quieter. Um, whatever, it's not too loud. Take care.